What's up, everybody? Welcome back to That BS Guy. I am That BS Guy. BS stands for Bariatric Surgery, and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. And this is a very special video as well. This is a review on where I had my surgery, Mexico Bariatric Center. Ta-da! Yay! Mexico Bariatric Center. Um, so, I know I've done... Uh, one and a half videos on on Mexico Bariatric Center, um, their services and what have you, in the past. But first of all, that first video about having surgery in Mexico, the sound quality, because I was just learning how to YouTube at that point, is awful. You can only hear the audio through one side of the speaker. Uh, and then secondly, um, you know, I have a lot more to say about it and my specifics. And so this is might be a little bit of a longer video, but for those of you who are interested in it, I'm just gonna talk about my experiences and how I overall would rate the service at the end of the at the end of the day. Um not you may obviously I can't compare it, but I can watch other people's videos and kind of compare it their experiences. So first and foremost, a couple things I'm gonna take in consideration as we go through this. Um affordability, okay, flexibility. Um, safety, cleanliness, uh, and results. Okay, and I'm sure I'll be talking about some other things here and there, but those those five components are really going to be the biggest thing. So uh, let's talk about affordability. Okay, so um, but well, actually, let's rewind that. Let's talk about Mexico Bariatric Center as a whole, real quick. So Mexico Bariatric Center is actually a um, a sourcing service. Okay, rather than you know the in exact hospital and, and look, I'll, I'll get to what that really means so mexico bariatric center is actually in a united states based business it's actually rated by the better business bureau um and when i enrolled with them uh and started the process everybody that i spoke to spoke clear fluent english and um they have a uh a wonderful nutritionist on staff that contacts you and helps you with your pre-diet and gives you very specific things to not not eat and or eat and or drink um, and so it really really set you up for success when you first begin your journey there um, as far as and so what they do is is that they you know they basically have a specific hospital in Tijuana uh, me doctor hospital to be exact that uh, they contract through um, for the use of, you know, basically two two of their floors, um, where they do the hospital. Um, they, it's also the same hospital another company called A Lighter Me uses as well. So both of those companies uh, use the same hospital. I don't think they use the same doctors, but I do know they use the same facilities. And so that hospital is 100% dedicated to doing bariatric surgeries and bariatric surgeries alone. So. They're equipped with the right drinks, they're equipped with the right food, they're equipped with the right people to handle our neediness when we go down there. And that's really nice to say, there was, I was needy as soon as I got out of surgery, and I'll talk about that in just a second. So um, my experience with them, uh, first and foremost, uh, I you know, pulled the trigger one night, I'm like, you know what, darn it, this has got to happen, I am not happy with myself, I'm not happy where I'm going at, I, I, like my weight loss ping pongs like it's crazy. I literally can eat one one meal that's not okay, and I'll gain 10 pounds. Like I just, it's hard. Like when you when you uh, have to work out two hours a day and only eat 1,500 calories in that same day in order for you to actually lose a little bit of weight. I mean, that's not a sustainable lifestyle. That's really not. And uh, I'm sure I'm not the only one out there and the, that has that kind of trouble with metabolism and things like that. So that's what prompted me to make this decision. Um, and so I, uh, I went to their website and I researched it and I really, before this, I did a lot of research on what type of surgery I wanted. And I also found out that my insurance did not cover in, in within the United States, um, having surgery, you know, having bariatric surgery at all. Then they would do the support stuff and the stuff after, but they wouldn't actually do the surgery unless I wanted to pay for it out of pocket. And I think since I wanted to do the duodenal switch surgery, um, it costs probably anywhere between twenty-four to thirty-two thousand dollars at price, depending on what you can finagle and and, and get uh, get the associate there. So um, I didn't have that much money, you know. And I don't think a lot of people have twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars of liquid cash so they can just, you know, here you go, you know, got it done. 
So I wanted to find some affordable options, so that's why I ran into the Bankstown Bariatric Center, and I actually also had a couple people at work who went through similar services uh, down in Mexico and had pretty good successes. So I wanted to go see what this medical tourism thing was about, and so I went uh, on their website and researched it and found out, you know, it's professional, uh, a lot of good information on there. They had a uh, they have a YouTube page that had a lot of testimonials from people. In fact, one of the testimonials was done in my hometown, where I live, and so and there was there was people that were just talking about their successes. And I mean, that's that's really what you want to see. Like, you don't want to just see. I mean, you, you can Google bad stuff about any company, but the thing is, is like unless it's blatant, you know, that's you know, or like more more often. I mean, you're. There's going to be some weirdness here and there, but I mean, you, the amount of people that were that, that te had testimonials that were talking positively about this, night and day, it was huge. It was a huge amount of people. So, for me, that was a good indicator that this was a legit company. Um, and so, what they do is you have to put like a deposit down. I think the deposit's like 500 bucks. Um, and yes, you can use credit cards throughout the entire process. So if you don't have liquid cash and you want to use a credit card, you can do that. Um, just know that there is a 5%, uh, at the time, there was a 5% surcharge um, for using credit cards. But that's something that not a lot of companies will do. Uh, they, you know, they, they will often suggest taking out a medical loan or, or something along that line. But I didn't do that. I just used my credit card, got airline miles, and used those same airline miles to pay for my flight down there. <laughs> so it almost paid for itself as far as, like, the the 5% stuff uh, was, in, was in consideration. So... I went with the duodenal switch surgery, and um, the uh, uh, and a lot of people in the United States sometimes find themselves doing two surgeries when they want to go with that one because their doctors or their insurance will require them to get the sleeve first, lose X amount of weight, and in reality, they're trying to get them to lose all the weight so they don't have to do that second part. But whatever, um, and then they and then if they do still need that surgery, then they go back in and they have the second part. So for me, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to do one and done. And so uh, after I started my pre-operation weight, um, you know, I had the duodenal switch surgery. So I didn't know which version. I said I wanted to let it, leave it up to the, the surgeon to decide what the best version of that of the duodenal switch, whether it be the SIP, SADS, or the uh, traditional. I ended up getting the traditional, the, B, the BPDS. Uh, and you, you can read on their website what the differences are if you want to. Um, but uh, they they were having all these discussions with me, and they went over the pricing with me, and um, I was fine with it. You know, I am you know at, at the at the time when I got my surgery, it was right around seven thousand dollars. It might be different now, um, but uh, you know, that's not bad compared seven thousand compared to thirty two thousand. I mean, that's night and day difference. That's a much more affordable thing. I can make payments on a seven thousand dollar credit card purchase than I can a $32,000 credit card purchase, which is over the limit of my card. <laughs> so um, it gave me that flexibility. And, and honestly, like that decision was the first part of getting my life back to the way I want it. So um, what they do during the, the now I'm talking about flexibility here. Uh, oftentimes in the States, you'll have to wait like an arbitrary six months of classes to, to teach you how to manage your diet, you know, all this stuff. And like, Honestly, a lot of it's going to be learning by ear and how your body kind of adjusts. I mean, that's what I found out. And those classes are cool. And I actually did take a couple of them when I had a different insurance until before I lost it and switched jobs and all this other. Yeah, point is, as I took a certain amount of classes before, so I kind of know what that's already like. And I didn't learn a darn thing from them. It was just more like hoops and copays that I had to jump through. So. Um, when, when it came time, when I called in and when they called me to try and it's like, well, when would you like to do the surgery? And I said, well, I have a conflict. I think I called in, um, late, in late January or, or mid February. Uh, I think it was mid February. Um, and I said, well, I have a, a trip I need to take in March. Um, what is, what does April look like? And then, I mean, that's only like a month and a half away really at that point, if that, if not that. And they're like, well, we have an opening on April 6th. So let's, uh, let's book that. Okay. So as soon as before they can book it, then you do actually have to pay the remaining part of the surgery to lock in that day. So I put it on my credit card and that the nutritionist got a hold of me, gave me a pre-operation diet plan to start as soon as I could. 
Um, typically that lasts six weeks. I only did it for two. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but seemed to work out okay because I went pretty hard on that. I followed the directions to a T. Um, it was extremely uncomfortable, the pre-operation diet part was. But, I mean, hey, you know what? It, I didn't have any complaints. Surgery went well. Apparently there was no excess bleeding and everything seemed to be okay. So um, it, was, it was good. So the uh, point is, is that they are pretty flexible. They can get you in when you need to get in. If you need to have a surgery next month, they could do it. If you want to wait it out two or three months, you can do that too. They they work with you, and because this is literally all they do. All right. Um, now, what's interesting from that point forward is that a lot of the pre-operating, like the nutritionists would reach out to me, but like my liaison person, you know, they they didn't really communicate with me too often, um, as much as I probably thought they would have. Uh, and in fact, one like to arrange, you know, because you have to book your own flight and you have to make sure that they know when you're going to be picked up and all this other stuff to kind of get all of that sorted out. I actually had to call them and, uh, you know, have them do that. So if there was any knock whatsoever on this entire company. That would be the only piece of it that was knockable <laughs> is that, uh, is that I think a little bit more communication, uh, from them reaching out to you at the beginning, uh, for particularly your scheduling portion would be beneficial. Um, with that being said, the person was very nice. Um, the nutritionist was really good. They called me several times to make sure that I was good and everything was okay. In fact, they've, all, they've done a couple follow-ups for me since then. Um, very good stuff. And so um, about two days prior to my flight uh, time, um, I get a call from my driver who's gonna pick me up. He's like, hey, um, I'm, I think his name is Miguel. I forget. I honestly don't forget his name. Um, but really nice guy. He's like, Hey, I just want, here's my phone number. And he sends you a picture of him standing in front of his car or whatever vehicle he's driving. Uh, and with his phone number attached to it. And he said, I, as soon as you land, give me a call. I'll tell you where to go pick, where I'm picking you up at. And as soon as I landed, called him while I was still unloading the plane. And he's like, meet me at, you know, uh, I think it was like sign Q at the San Diego airport or whatever it was. And I went out there and there was a, some other people there that are also going as well. So I got to share some rides. Um, they typically recommend tipping the drivers. Now you're going to be having several rides depending on, you know, the surgeries that you have, but you're gonna have a ride to, from the airport to the hospital, uh, to do lab work. You're going to have a ride from the hospital to the hotel. You're going to have a ride from the hotel back to the hospital for the surgery. And then you're gonna have another ride from the hospital back to the hotel and then you're going to have another ride back to the um back to the airport so for the airport rides you might want to tip a little heavier maybe like 15 20 25 dollars honestly uh for the other rides you know maybe five bucks five six seven eight dollars per um and so i would budget you know if you're going to do this i would budget like a hundred dollars maybe eighty dollars in just for tips just to kind of show your appreciation because I don't know if you've ever driven in Tijuana, but it is not the same as driving in the United States. Kind of crazy, not gonna lie. Um, but uh, they do this every day and then they, they do it in a safe way and they keep you safe. And you know, they're all friendly guys. Um, and so uh, the rest of this, I'm gonna talk about what happened once I got there. So I went to the hospital and they take you in this intake room and uh, you know, they have you fill out all this paperwork and they have you sit down and they have, you have to sign a version in English and a version in Spanish. Uh, and they do an EKG and then you, you take, get taken into the side room and um, a nurse or a phlebotomist, I should say, uh, takes your blood. Um, side note, and this probably won't matter to a lot of you, uh, particularly of the female variety, but uh, their, their care staff, the women who work there, I don't know what the heck's going on, but they're like some of the most attractive women I've ever seen. I was so self-conscious <laughs> because of that. It's no fault of their own. I'm just saying that there's some pretty, pretty people uh, who work there. Um, and uh, so kudos. Kudos, guys. Like, you look great. <laughs> Anyways, uh, moving on. So um, when you pull up there, though, it's kind of funny because you see a lot of people in their, um, uh, for lack of a better term, nighty. <laughs> <laughs> your operation gown, uh, rolling around with their IVs, and some sometimes you can hear see their drip bags and things like that. I try to hide those kind of things, and um, the you know you, but everybody seems to be smiling and having you know having a decent time, and that that was the really big indicator because 
I don't know if you've ever been to Tijuana, but like a nice building could be in the middle of a bunch of not nice buildings, and that's where this hospital was. It was a nice building, kind of surrounded by some not nice looking buildings, and so you just kind of had to remember, like, okay, this is a very different environment, but that doesn't mean that inside the hospital everything was clean, nice. You're not going to get the newest equipment. I mean, you should probably know that going into this. Like, you, they're going to do like um, manual. Uh, IV checks, manual medication checks, you know, paper, paper route, you know, just making sure that people have eyes on you um, and they're not relying on machines. Um, the rooms themselves are nice. It's all air conditioned. Uh, they have high speed internet um, at the hospital. The, the hotel was a, a, um, a really, it was like a four star hotel. So, I mean, it was, it was really nice. So it's a, definitely up to standards regardless of where you are. But at the hospital that has your own, you do have a private bathroom. Um, I do think that if you are uh, if you are coming by yourself, like I did, you some if you're not a male, you would need to tell them that you want a private room. Like you'd prefer to have your room be private. Otherwise, I do know that they will put two people together sometimes, and that can be really uncomfortable, particularly right after surgery. So, a um, little little sidebar tip: if you want a private room, just tell them like I would prefer to have a private room. Um, when I'm at the, when I'm in the hospital, please. Um, and uh, so I I didn't really lay in the bed a lot. I had my you know iPad there and I was watching like the the Mexican version of Netflix, which by the way has a lot of different stuff on there. <laughs> Found out that there's a lot of different seasons of stuff you can get in Mexico that you can't get in the United States. Um, so I actually found that really fun to to kind of watch all these shows that I didn't have the option to before. Um, on top of that, there. Uh, their care staff's really nice. They will bring you food. Um, I mean, uh, w when I rolled into surgery, um, they uh, they started playing. They asked me what my favorite song was before they put me under, and they were blaring it loud. That was the last thing I remember until I woke up from the surgery. Um, there was a little bit of a like it, this guy comes up to you before you have your surgery. He's a little bearded guy. And he starts asking you all these like really serious questions about your blood sugar levels and all this other kind of stuff. Like you, you almost think he's trying to disqualify you from having it, but he's actually making sure to document things to make sure that everything's going to go right for you. Uh, and so, uh, just pay attention to him. Don't lie to him. And, you know, it can seem a little off-putting, but he's there, there to help and uh, and just kind of make sure that everything looks good and and, and it will be good uh, when you do it. Uh, as far as uh, the surgery itself, I couldn't complain about it. I mean, like, yeah, the initial gas pain as soon as you wake up is awful. Um, and if you haven't seen my vlog videos, uh, I'll try and put a link up here uh, for that um, so you can kind of actually physically see what I'm talking about. Um, but, you know, honestly, you'll be fine. Like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's good. Like, you know, you once you get over that first two hours, it's all downhill from there. Um, the first, the first, the first four or five hours after surgery is always the roughest. So, um, if you are lucky enough to have an early morning surgery, um, by the time the evening rolls around, you should be ready to go to sleep again. Um, they will give you nausea and sleep medication as needed, um, depending on what the severity level is. They had to give me extra sleep and nausea medicine a couple times, just you know, because I wasn't feeling too good at certain points. They never throw up, but it just didn't feel good. Um, and in the States, like, you know, every single time they had to, they had to redo my IV catheter like four times, no joke, because I would, I would just clot up. Um, and I know in the United States, like every single time would have been like a couple hundred dollars and they didn't charge me anything for that, like at all. Uh, that extra medication cost me an extra $30 instead of like hundreds. So. All of these things do, like, if you think about them, like, it really adds up. Like, it's just the, the they're, t they're literally taking care of you. Like, that's it. Like, you came down there for a point and purpose, and they're going to do it. You know, um, this is all they do. All they do. Um, and so, um, I had to stay in the hospital for three days for my recovery period. Then they put me back into the hotel, and then they picked me up from the hotel to take me back across the border. Um, fun fact, there is a medical lane um, coming back from the border um, across uh, so you get to bypass all of that traffic uh, and uh, get back sooner so it's actually it's actually quite nice because you don't have to be in the same line as everybody else I mean it doesn't mean that line is short but it, like it took us only like 20 minutes to get from the hotel back across the border which most people it takes like two hours so 
not bad, not bad at all. Uh, make sure you have your passport and all that fun stuff. Make sure it's all valid and all, 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 all good that way. Um, it, the, after the surgery was over, they called me a couple times and they, they, they continued to send me some emails just for the checkups and things like that. But, you know, uh, when it's all said and done, everything seems to be good. I mean, I can't complain. Can't complain at all. Um, it is a, uh, it is a good feeling to have that, you know, be at that point. I mean, I, by the time I was discharged and back at the hospital, back at the hotel for that last night, I was walking around. I walked to the pharmacy to pick up some extra drugs um, that I that I, they, they, that they said that I might need, um, and went and picked them up. Luckily, I had some more fluent Spanish people because that's the part. You know, when you go into regular stores, like they're not. They're not there for medical tourism. They're they're just a pharmacy, right? So they don't speak English, and so my, my Spanish was a little rough at that moment. And so I had some fluent Spanish speakers with me that really helped me out in getting the getting all the supplies uh, purchased correctly. Um, other than that, you know, um, price and affordability. I mean, honestly, I can't complain. I just want to say thank you, Mexico Bariatric Center, for taking good care of me and uh, for allowing. You know, for, for doing what you do. I mean, uh, me, Dr. Hospital, uh, Mexico Bariatric Center, your partnership, tremendous work, great job, um, and it's great. Uh, what I also will say is is that um, so as far as my official rating, if it's like uh, five stars is the top, one star is like, man, don't ever do that. I'm gonna give it like a 4.75. Um, if it wasn't for that, you know, a little bit of a little bit of a mix up at the beginning uh, with them not checking with me a little bit more on the rep side of things, it would have been five stars completely because they took really, really, really solid care of me. You know, when I when I got to the hospital the first night, or I was complaining because I hadn't eaten, I was been on a pure, you know, I, I was flying all day, so I hadn't, the only thing I could have was water. There wasn't anything else I could eat. Like there wasn't chicken broth, there wasn't anything. I had to be on a liquid diet, clear liquid diet. And so when they got to the hotel, the hotel actually stocks up because of all the medical tours and people that come through there for them. They have the chicken broth, and then by the way, it was such good chicken broth. It was probably the best chicken broth I've ever had, bar none. Um, they had uh, sugar-free popsicles and Jello. I mean, it was like a feast among feasts when I got there. I was so happy to have some food. I was just ecstatic. Um, one of the biggest stigmas that people have about it is Tijuana itself. They they think, oh, you're going to Mexico, like that's scary. Anything can be scary, but the thing is, is this is now something that happens more often than you really think so. Um, a lot of people, probably someone you even know, has already done this. And I'm just trying to, to lessen the stigma by saying it's okay. It doesn't need to be the option, but it can be an option if this is some a route that you want to take. So I highly recommend Mexico Bariatric Center. They did a wonderful job with me. They've continued to check in with me. And honestly, I mean, I'm only uh, 18, 19 weeks past my surgery, but I'm over 114 pounds down. Um, and I am in a very, very positive spot uh, in my life. With that being said, uh, for those, uh, because I have a YouTube channel, uh, I've managed to negotiate something with Mexico Bariatric Center to give back to you guys. Um, there is a portal. If you go to www.mexicobariatriccenter.com slash thatbsguy, if you sign up for their, or if you, if you put in your information to, to show that you're interested in bariatric surgery, they will, if you're a subscriber to this channel and you do that, they will provide you with an exclusive discount on whatever surgery that you want. I'm not going to name a number of what how much that is because I think they that that changes over time. But uh, and I don't want to pigeonhole them into something that they you know they don't want to get pigeonholed into. But it is an exclusive discount that can help offset some of that cost for you. That is just we just want to give back to the community and and help you guys out as best as possible. So. You know, if you're interested in, in going through this kind of service, highly recommend it. Save some money for you. I didn't get that option. So it's all there right there for you. So thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions about Mexico Bariatric Center, feel free to uh, leave them down below, and I'll be happy to get them answered in my next video, or I'll respond directly. I'm pretty responsive online. Uh, and I look forward to making more videos for you guys and giving my input if you want to have it. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mexico Bariatric Center. Um, can't thank you enough for the life that you guys have given back to me. It's it's uh, 
it's tremendous and I am thankful every day for making that decision. So thank you for, for allowing me to, to afford to do that because um, I was my back was definitely against the wall because I didn't have insurance. So thank you so much. Thanks everybody for watching. If you haven't liked and subscribed already, please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye-bye.